what I do know is that like after doing this entire initiative that I want to keep doing things similar to this because I'm more or less more introverted person. I'm not so great at social stuff. And so generally before doing this whole initiative, I was more comfortable with just sitting at my desk and reading research and, you know, getting things done in that way. But after doing this initiative, I think that it's become a lot more apparent that I can still go out and do things like this as well. And although it's not exactly comfortable, I would say, it's still a wonderful experience. And I think I want to continue doing something like this in the realm of like psychology and education. All right, everyone. Hello. Today, I am joined by the one and only Sophia. Sophia is on the other side of the globe. She's currently in China. So maybe we could just start off by having you share a little bit about yourself. Who are you, Sophia? What do you like to do for fun? All right. Um, I'm Sophia. Hi. Uh, I'm a 10th grader at Phillips Exeter. I'm in Shenzhen, China right now, like Kevin said, so halfway across the world. On the more serious side, I like psychology and I like education because interests are kind of a spoiler for um, the initiative that I'll be talking about. But, you know, more leisurely, I like to bake, I like to cook, especially because I get to do the cooking and like my family has to do the eating. So, you know, <laughs> wonderful dynamic. Um, and I like to what else do I like to do I like more I guess analytical sort of stuff so I like taking notes which is not a common hobby I guess but it's a lot of fun and quirky um and I think yeah I like doing math paradoxes all those fun things all right let's move on to your initiative so you mentioned psychology and education and I know you started something at the intersection of those two interests so maybe you could tell us a little bit about the initiative you worked on for the past few months, uh, how you came up with the idea, and yeah, maybe a, a brief little timeline. That would be awesome. Sure. So um, my initiative was called the Psych Lab, and in like a one-liner that Kevin made me write, it is a <laughs> program for middle and high school students to learn to design and conduct their own psychology research. So, you know, in less abstract terms, we help students learn how to do their own research and how to design experiments. And they actually did a few experiments, which was a lot of fun. And really quickly, the reason I came up with this is, again, I really like psychology to start with. I only really got in touch with it like the past summer or so, but it's been so much fun. And I also really just like teaching, I guess. I had this thing when I was younger where I had a friend and I, we would just spend weekends together and we just teach each other stuff. And it was a lot of fun. And so I guess that's also part of the reason why I wanted to do a program that surrounds education in a sense. And on another note, I also really like exploring different methods of learning, I would say, because um, I've been through like, you know, I, I, I was in a Chinese public school to start with, and then I went to Exeter. So it's been a pretty big change in different learning methods. And so I've always been quite interested in what is like a good way to learn, I guess. And experiments are pretty uncommon when it comes to learning anything really and especially psychology so I wanted to try that out yeah and let's talk about the timeline so the timeline has been pretty bonkers for me uh, I had this idea way back like, I would say eight or so months ago but the thing was it's not exactly the idea that I ended up implementing so I had two different versions of the lab before I came to this one the first one was that I would just do kind of almost like a college psychology lab where students could just go on their own time and, you know, do their own research or their own experiments or stuff like that. Um, long story short, that did not work out because as I got deeper into it, I started realizing there were lots of issues that I couldn't really deal with, like incentive of, you know, could would students really want to come and, and the amount of time it would take them to do an experiment without any additional incentive is like eight or nine hours at least. And so that was pretty big of an issue. So I dropped that, um, went out the window. And I think the second idea that I had was kind of similar. I call it the psych lub, which I thought was a clever um, amalgamation of like a club and a lab. And so as per the name, in this case, I tried to collaborate with our own psychology club in Exeter and design almost like a curriculum for it. Again, long story short, I way oversimplified things. There were a ton of issues with like how we were going to teach it and who we were going to teach, whether there's even going to be people who come. And then there's also time as well. And so that takes me to about like, I think like start of July-ish. And that's when I got to the idea that I was talking about a little earlier. And so those like I got that new idea I thought was pretty awesome and then I got into the section of doing interviews and um, getting people to sign up for the lab 
which was horrifying. <laughs> I did not like that process. But yeah, Kevin told us, it was, and I think like a few of my rookie, fellow rookies have explained before as well, like doing phone calls is extremely important. And it has been helpful looking back. But the time that I did it, which took me like a month or so to plan out how I was going to do the interviews, that was very painful. <laughs> the lucky thing is, now that I'm looking back on it, I think it wasn't so scary at all. Like, I was scared that people were going to hate the idea or that they weren't just going to talk to me at all or there would be a ton of awkward silences. But there wasn't. And I think, you know, also relating a bit back to the idea of like the two labs that I had before I came up with the actual idea. It's really that although they seem really daunting or even they seem like failures back then as I moved over them and I survived them, which was woo, it not, seems not as scary at all. And I think that's a really awesome thing that I get to, to realize as I look back on the timeline. But yeah, so I did a week about, uh, about a week of interviewing. Um, and then from there on about mid-August, we started the lab and it's been running for, I guess like two and a half months now. And we ended just last weekend which is amazing. That is so awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about your students? Um, how did they like the program? How many students did you have? Did they grow? Did you grow? What was that like? Ooh, okay, so I had um, six students. I think I interviewed around like eight or 10 people and I got six of them in, which I'm, yeah, pretty nice. Um, uh, for them, most of them were middle schoolers, I think. Some of them were going into high school, but general, the age range that I was looking towards. And um, I think that, Throughout this whole entire process, one thing that I think I'm really proud of them for doing at least is sticking with me throughout this entire thing, because we had a, a pretty big issue during the lab of time management, because we started around mid-August, and as we go through mid-August, we get to September, which is when school starts for basically everyone, for me and my students, and so you know, I planned very specifically for that. I would say, okay, you know, for the first two weeks of, um, uh, sorry, for the first two weeks of the lab, I would do this thing very specifically. And then, you know, we would have um, just the experiments to do once we got into September and it would be easy breezy. It did not work out that way. And instead um, we ended up having to take a two week break in the middle because they weren't able to hand in assignments on time. We weren't able to get experiments done. So yeah, I'm really, mind blown, I guess, by the fact that they stuck with me, even though I took a two week break to replan everything. And that they even finished the lab with about as much enthusiasm as they started with, because they were all really excited about getting to do experiments. And even though we had to kind of run over a few pretty major bumps in the way, they were still really happy about getting to conduct their own experiments, which they did two of in fact, and it was amazing. Wow. So yeah, it sounds like a little roadblock, but you overcame it with your children. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your curriculum as well? So like, how did you teach them? Was this all virtual? I assume it was virtual. Like what formats did you use? How often did you guys meet? You mentioned experiments. What was like an experiment, example experiment that you guys conducted? Oh yeah, um, sure. So we were, it was like a nine week curriculum, I think that I planned and Basically, you know, as a, as a spoiler, we didn't really go through entirely with what I started with, but the general idea remained the same, which was that we were just going to try and conduct, we were going to try and learn how to do research, and then we were going to just do it. And um, we did end up doing that, though, in a few different ways. I'll go into that. But um, to start for the first few weeks, uh, yeah, it was completely virtual. And I made a few videos because I realized that, you know, time wasn't exactly so easy. It wasn't easy to arrange a specific time when everyone could meet over Zoom. And so instead, I just made four videos that I put on YouTube, in fact, and I just got them to watch the videos. After that bit, we got into a few activities during Zoom classes where we would just go over the concepts and have some games which were a lot of fun to prepare as well and then after that we started doing experiments so um, we started with a more minor scaled one where they recreated um, two pretty famous experiments in psychology I think one of uh, one of the groups did the ash conformity experiment and the other one tried to work out like classical conditioning and all that fun stuff I think they conditioned a few of their classmates which was really cool to, to listen to how they did it after that we then took the two week break which was that that's something we can get into and then um, after that we had more or less a research project, I guess. So I got two groups again, 
and they each looked into a topic that they were more or less interested in that they wanted to do some research on and so we did a more I guess scholarly aspect of psychology for that part and then we ended with a little project where I got them to go watch a Vsauce video because <laughs> I'm a huge fan of his series called Mindfield and I think it's a wonderful way to get to approach psychology and so I also just kind of skipped a ton of planning and I was like, go watch a Vsauce video. I don't need to plan anything else. And so I got them to choose from like a ton of his lists and um, investigate, you know, the topics that he brings up in one of the videos that they were interested in, or even to recreate some of the experiments that he did within one of the videos. And they did a little report on that. And that's where we concluded. Wow. Sounds really thorough. Even though it was virtual, I feel like you packed a lot of material into the program. Do you have plans to continue this in the future or are you going to grow it or do you want to put it on the side, shelve it and work on something totally different? Yeah, I'm not so sure if I would want to continue with the lab. And in fact, I'm not too sure in general about like where I want to go with this in mm -hmm. the future. But I'd say that what I do know is that like after doing this entire initiative that I want to keep doing things similar to this because I'm more or less more introverted person. I'm not so great at social stuff. And so generally before doing this whole initiative, I was more comfortable with just sitting at my desk and reading research and, you know, getting things done in that way. But after doing this initiative, I think that it's become a lot more apparent that I can still go out and do things like this as well. And although it's not exactly comfortable, I would say, it's still a wonderful experience. And I think I want to continue doing something like this in the realm of like psychology and education. That's super cool. So we're running a little bit low on time. I'll ask you one more question and then we'll wrap things up. What yeah. advice do you have to other young student entrepreneurs who are trying to get their foot in the door, who are starting their first programs? What would you tell them? What would you tell a Sophia from like six months or a year ago? I, I have two tips, I would say, if that's not cheating. Um, to start, I would tell them to do something that they really want to do, as cliche as that sounds. And for the second one, I would say to just go do it, sponsored by Nike, but go do it. And um, I think that for the first part, it's extremely important to really want to do what you're aiming for, because Again, it makes the process a whole lot more enjoyable if it's something you actually want to get done. But on the other hand, when like inevitably obstacles or bumps along the road come up, you're, you're going to have something to hang on to, like a kind of vision that you can look towards when you think, oh, I can't really do this. I just want to go into a hole and die. You can think about that vision that you have and how you really want to get it done. And then you probably have the strength to pull through. So I think that's probably the first tip. On the other hand, I would say just go do it. <laughs> because for me, the biggest issue that I came across was really this idea of time management and starting the term and how that really blew up my entire timeline for um, the lab to proceed with. And I think that when you don't just do something, but instead like I did, you plan out really, really detailedly what you want to do, what specific time, and when you want to do something, and what you want to do at that specific time, things tend to go awry very quickly. Like if one thing falls out of place, the whole plan collapses. And so instead, I would just urge you to go get it done, because inevitably things are going to come up, problems are going to surface, and if you don't plan so much, it's really much easier to focus on what you really want to do and the bigger goals that you have. And when obstacles come up, you can just deal with them. Awesome. Just do it, guys. I think for so many young students, the hardest part is the first step. It really is believing that you can do it. It was a huge, huge deal. It's a concurrent theme I've heard from a lot of the rookie interviews. Well, thank you so much, Sophia. That was really insightful, really helpful. And of course, really, really inspiring. <laughs> uh, you know, just a few months ago, the psych club was an idea on paper and you had real breathing customers. They grew, they learned a ton. I'm sure you grew and you learned a ton as well. Um, but thank you so much for sharing your experience. And that's pretty much all we have for today. So we will catch you guys at the next one. All right. Take it easy, guys. Bye. <laughs>